Welcome to my video on SAP GUI scripting introduction and basics. And the reason I'm making this video because um, I've been doing content in this um, area since 2016 and in the last couple of years, obviously, I have a lot of views on these videos and I also receive a lot of comments. So I thought it is time to go through this whole subject again and uh, maybe just highlight the things that you guys are asking the most. And I can summarize most of these details in a short video. So if I make any you know, similar content in the future, I don't have to just repeat myself every single time. So I can always refer back to this video. And as you can see, I'm going to cover quite a few different topics here. And uh, if you're only interested in a certain uh, part of this video, then you can find the jump links in the YouTube timeline or the links in the video description as well. So you can just watch the part that you need. So I'm planning to do some summary videos like this one and maybe a, a few more or at least one more other where I'm going to cover the basics. So it would be at least a good uh, foundation for all the other videos I have in this playlist or anything that I would create in the future. And before I go any further, I just want to address the whole GUI scripting. So what is GUI scripting? So these are for uh, ones who haven't seen any of my other videos and they are interested in the subject. So let me just cover this in a nutshell. So SAP GUI scripting is a, is a functionality within SAP GUI which allows you to record all the things that you are doing in, a, in the GUI. So the transactions that you launch, the data that you enter into the screen, the things that you click with the mouse or you know, button presses, enter keys, anything that you use. It is very similar to how the macro recording works in Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Word, where the end result is an actual code that you can use. And the same thing is happening here. So um, when you record a macro in SAP GUI, uh, then the GUI is going to create a Visual Basic script file for you that you can run. Or what you, uh, I usually do is, uh, because it's Visual Basic, I can just use that code in any other application which supports Visual Basic, like Visual Basic for applications. So Microsoft Excel or Microsoft Word. So here in this document, I'm just going to focus on the basics, like, you know, how you run, how to use the scripting and, you know, some of the things that you need to know about it. And then in the future video, I'm going to talk about how you can integrate it into Microsoft Excel. So I think even in the basics, it is very usable. It's very useful to know how you can create a recording and then maybe just, you know, look at... Uh, the, the recorded script and maybe make some manual changes to it because it's not that complicated even if you don't have any programming knowledge. But then I think the real potential comes once you are starting using that scripting uh, code or the scripting language in, uh, let's say, Microsoft Excel, because then you have Excel where you can, you know, design data entry or you can, you know, specify whatever you want to enter, whatever you, you want the script to do, what sort of data to enter. And then, you know, you click a button and then the script runs in the background and runs a report, creates a document or, you know, performs whatever task that you need to do in uh, SAP GUI. Previously, when I mentioned that it's very similar to the script recording in Microsoft Excel, um, I did this intentionally because I said it creates a code where it records all the things that you did on the on the screen, on the GUI itself. And uh, so it is much better than like a generic macro recording that, um, uh, you know, you have these applications for Windows, which will actually record like what pixel that you clicked on the screen, assuming that there is like something under that uh, screen and those type of recorders uh, always rely on some screen elements uh, being in on exactly same part of the screen so if you try to run that script on a different computer which has a different screen resolution it might not work because let's say the button on the another screen is is a slightly different location so your script is going to say oh click on this location but your button is no longer there but the with the GUI recording uh, the what the recording uh, records is the actual you know field names the button names the um, you know the keys that you have pressed so it works even in you know different screen resolution different uh, computers uh, it even works if you have your SAP GUI minimized and then you are doing something else on your computer so in that regard I think it is more similar to how LSMW works because again in LSMW you create a recording and then you map the fields 
sounds in your recordings uh, to a source file so you can tell you know what data to use to certain fields and when I started working with LSMW it was um, you know I quite happy with the, that product but uh, there were certain transactions that the, for some reason my, uh, the LSMW was not able to script. So I was clicking on a certain field and it just wouldn't appear in the LSMW. And finally I've given up and once I started using GUI scripting, I've never seen any case where uh, this GUI scripting was not able to you know, record every single mouse click, every single field that I have used on the screen, no matter how complicated some of these screens uh, look like. And finally, what I also wanted to mention that, um, as the name suggests, this is SAP GUI scripting. So it works with any SAP product which uses the SAP GUI, which means this is quite an old technology and a uh, technology which is going out of fashion as we you know, move over to HANA and the web services and Fiori, because while well, those are not GUI, so they, uh, this technique will not be used um, you know, in the, with those technologies. But I can say that this uh, SAP GUI scripting works with anything that is GUI. So I'm primary, uh, primarily a CRM user or CRM consultant. So I'm using most of my scripts in SAP CRM, but I've used this script in SAP ERP as well. And if you are using BI where you have a, like a BI transaction, sorry, a GUI transaction in the, in the BI system, it will work there as well. And I've started using scripting back in 2000, probably 2008 or nine, when we had SAP GUI 6.2 I think and it was working fine there now I have SAP GUI 7.7 .7 and it works fine so this is a technology which has existed from a long time and it works across all GUI versions I did mention that I'm making these videos um, or started making these videos back in 2016 and in that time I've received a lot of feedback from you guys how um, useful this tool is or how useful this knowledge is for you to automate your daily works, automate your chores, uh, uh, whether you are working in consulting or maybe in like application management or you know system support. And if you look at uh, some of these videos in the playlist, I think I've covered a lot of different areas, how you can run reports, how you can extract data, download attachments, create screenshots, create orders, uh, uh, which are all possible with SAP GUI scripting. And as I said, I'm making these videos so I can summarize some of the basic information. So if you get stuck with any of the you know, the more advanced videos, then you can go back to this one and then, you know, cover the basics. For example, how you check authorization and, uh, you know, initial setup and that sort of stuff. And since I mentioned the comments, I also wanted to say that Obviously, I do get a lot of questions of, um, you know, some of you asking me to do a script for a certain transaction. And in most cases, I don't really reply to those or I don't um, or I say that I won't be able to help you. Um, and well, there are two reasons. One is uh, obviously I'm trying to give you some knowledge in order for you to do the things that you need to do to create your own scripts, to create your own Excel files and, you know, create it for, for yourself. Although I do understand that it, uh, especially once we get to the Excel integration part, that it, it requires some sort of programming knowledge, uh, some visual basic knowledge, uh, which at least it's uh, good that if you have it. Um, but on the other hand, if you ask me to do, you know, uh, create an example for a certain transaction, I mean, there is a good chance that I have no idea how to use that transaction. As I said, I primarily work in CRM and I have some knowledge in the ERP, but that's also limited to a little bit of supply, a little bit of SD, maybe a very little, you know, MM. So if you ask me about how you automate like a finance transaction, I have no idea. So I've never run that transaction. Maybe I don't even have access to that transaction in the system that I, I use. Um, and most importantly, if your um, you know, system has any developments, you know, the screens are different, uh, there are some validation rules, you know, pop-up messages, then whatever I try to do in, in my system is probably not going to work for you. Not to mention if you are talking about some Z transaction which uh, are specific to your installation. And even if everything would work, I don't think that my you know, system has the same setup, same data that uh, I would be able to create anything even if you tell me how to use the transaction so I'm really sorry but I think um, 
I'm not saying it's impossible, but I think in many cases it would be really difficult for me to help you from the from the beginning and build something from the ground up. So I'm really hoping that with this information you will be able to do everything yourself. I think I already mentioned the things that I used the GUI scripting in the past and um, I just really want to just summarize it and and basically all the things that I've used in the past are more or less covered in one of the videos that uh, I have uploaded in the past couple of years. So uh, the first example that I used is I was working on a big implementation project and I was working in a service contract area. And our service contracts were complicated itself that there was like a lot of different variances with, uh, you know, billing cycles and prices and different products that you could use. And also the changes that you have to take through a product, uh, various uh, contract changes, billings. Um, and whenever we made any changes, then there were like a loads of scenarios that we would need to retest everything. So we have to create new data. You have, uh, we have to run the contract through, you know, certain processes, maybe not even a single process, but multiple processes in order to get to a state where we needed to check, like, uh, you know, making sure that the prices are correctly um, updated or we can invoice uh, an item from the from the service contract. So this was the first thing where I created the various scripts, how I can, you know, create a contract, run a change, for example, do invoicing. And I would have a complex Excel file where it says, okay, I need at say one contract with this specific product and a billing cycle and, you know, the customer, whatever. So it would create a contract and then it would just run that same contract through the cycle. So it was, Excel was just orchestrating all these various scripts that it would execute just to create the data, modify the data, and at the end it would just log like, okay, that's the contract number or that's the invoice number, and I would just load that invoice, check the values, make sure that everything works. And it was literally like um, setting up the data in Excel, click a button, go for a coffee, and you know maybe after coffee break and a little bit of chat with my colleagues, uh, my data was there and I didn't have to lift my finger to do all these, uh, you know, complicated activities. And in consulting, the other big thing which I always have to do is, uh, you know, create some reports, maybe do some reoccurring tasks, um, you know, weekly, monthly, where I would need to run something um, like a query or just a very simple table selection from SE16 and then extract the data and then maybe just, uh, you know, process the data, create some graphs or some reports. And that is something that I can easily do in, in GUI scripting as well. So I would have an Excel file which runs the script, um, which runs um, SQ01 or SE16. It uh, runs the uh, the selection extracts the data and then within Excel um, and with the you know VBA code I can just uh, pull the file that was extracted from SAP and, and just load it into like a new worksheet in Excel and then I would already have other worksheets prepared to use that source worksheet and then you know create pivots and graphs and whatnot so again it's really easy to automate all these activities and again once you have this up and running which obviously takes time you just press a button you go for a break and in 10-15 minutes you have all the data prepared for you. And after this much introduction, I think it is time to actually look at the recording, how you create a recording in, uh, in SAPGUI scripting. So here I'm going to quickly take you through um, like a very simple selection. We are going to load an SE16 table uh, or a table in SE16, you know, set a filter and then execute it. That's it. It's good enough. It's going to be good enough for testing so you can see how the process works. And also quickly, I'm going to show you how you can easily check whether you have access to run scripting in your system. Before I start the recording, I want to show you the basic checks that you can do whether scripting is enabled. So if you look at your status bar in your SAP GUI, you see this part of the screen here and then if you uh, put your mouse over it, then it's going to show you that um, SAP GUI scripting, and for me it's, uh, it, it shows scripting is not running. So it means that there is no script running at the moment, but uh, uh, you know scripting is enabled in my SAP system. And if this is not enabled, then this is going to appear as you know so like a gray icon. Um, so you can definitely tell whether scripting is enabled or not. And in order to access scripting, you go to uh, this customize local layout button. 
you go to script recording and playback and that's going to bring up this pop-up window where you can see that you have a record and a play button and for me both of the record and the playback is um, well it's red and green so it's not grayed out which means that both recording and playback is enabled in my system um, so I think what we can do is we can you know create a recording and uh, what I want to do first is um, well, there is already a file name here. So this is the, the file name that I want to uh, save the script in. So you just specify a file name and the default extension is .vbs for Visual Basic Script. So uh, I think we are ready to start the recording. So I just click on record and this pop-up window disappears. And as you can see, this icon is um, showing this um, sort of chevron animation, which means that uh, the scripting is running. So it's either a script recording or a script playback is running. So first I need to go into my transaction. And what I usually do is I start the transaction with slash n. So if there is any part of the script which uh, leaves the, uh, the window in a transaction with slash n, at least I can restart or you know jump into another transaction. So slash n se16, and I'm going to use um, but000. So this is a customer master table in CRM. Yeah, by the way, this is a CRM system. And I'm going to use a grouping z7 and then execute. And we get some data. Yeah, that's fine. And I end the recording. So as you can see, it is very easy. We just clicked on the uh, record button and we did our business in SAP GUI just like we would do normally. And at the end, I just clicked on the stop button and my script is recorded. And now that we have done the recording, I think it is time to actually show you how you can play back a recording. Besides just show you how you play it back, I also want to show you the, the Visual Basic code which uh, SAP creates. And I mean, this is a Visual Basic code, so this is a programming code, but I think um, even though it looks really, really complicated, it is uh, fairly easy to understand how it looks like. And if you want to make small changes in a simple notepad, I think it should be easy to do, even if you have no or very limited programming experience. So this is pretty much where we left off in the previous section. So we created recording and once you save the recording, your file name gets copied over here to the playback section. So now it also shows like video.vbs. So I want to test this out. So let me just go back to into the main screen so you can see, you know, the you know what really happens here so i just click on play and then what you would see that sc16 is launched the you know the table name the filter is maintained and uh, and the selection is executed and we can see the report and this is all that we have recorded so now i'm back and um, this pop-up window comes up again and that's it so I mean, it cannot be any simpler than that. You just select the file that you have recorded and then you click play and SAP does the same thing. And what I haven't mentioned previously that the way this script works is obviously SAP knows uh, when a certain action is completed, like, you know, when the selection screen has actually loaded the results, when um, the screen has advanced from the first screen to the next screen. So you don't have to worry about timings if your uh, script runs longer, then your script is just going to wait until, you know, one action is uh, executed before it executes another action. So this is again a big advantage to some simpler script recording where it you have to like, uh, you know, record certain mouse clicks and types and you have to time them, allow some system to, you know, do the processing before you would uh, you know, push the button again or push the, uh, the, the mouse pointer again where the new screen hasn't loaded yet. But we are not really done yet because um, not only that I wanted to show you how you run the report, but I also want to show you how uh, this script looks like. So this is the video that uh, VBS that I mentioned previously. And I'm going to open this in Notepad and this uh, opens the actual script um, language or well the script code that uh, SAP GUI scripting has created.
And it looks a little bit daunting, but it is actually very easy to understand. So first of all, we have these four, 14, I think 14 lines in the beginning of the code, which is going to be always the same. So this does some, um, you know, programming housekeeping, creating objects uh, in order to use um, your, you know, GUI and your session. So you can pretty much ignore this uh, part. And then the rest is always going to be like this. So there are going to be a bunch of lines, but all of them starts with session dot find by id and that basically says that in my gui session find this id which could be a field a button a well basically any part of the the gui screen um, like a tab control or a, yeah well usually buttons and fields so, and if we just, you know, read the code as like, you know, English word, again, I think you can make out a lot what is really happening here. So you can see on the first one, it says maximize. So that basically just maximizes your GUI screen. So it is full, it is full screen. It is always in, included in the recording for some reason. In the next, you can see that we have entered the transaction slash NSC16. So that's recorded here. And then we have something which is, um, it says send key, send V key zero. So that's always when you press enter. So that's and key zero. And then um, we have entered the table name BUT000. And again, if you read this ID here, then again, you can make out some of these details. So for example, it says table name. So again, that's an indication that that was the field where, you, where we entered the table name. And yes, the value was the table name that we have used in the uh, script recording. And then we pressed again, enter. So we got to the selection screen. And on the selection screen, we populated one of the fields with uh, the grouping, which was Z7. And a couple of other lines here, which like the field got focus and something about the position, which I don't really know what it does, but again, the recording creates this line and I usually leave it in the script. And then finally, there was a press event and you can see that on toolbar one, button eight was pressed. And that is the, you know, execute button you have on the SC16 selection screen. Again, you don't really have to understand all these lines, but if you just remember the things that you have done, you can pretty much relate each of the button presses, uh, mouse clicks to one line in the code. And as I said, the real powerful magic of GUI scripting happens once you integrate this recorded script into a Microsoft Excel document because you know, it's much easier to um, enter data in Microsoft Excel. And of course, I would use Excel to loop a script through, you know, multiple iterations with different data. But if you don't want to do that, or if you find that a little bit too daunting, you have the script here. So you can execute this script as it is, as we have just seen a couple of seconds ago, or a couple of minutes ago but you can just use Notepad to make simple changes. So let's assume you, you need to run this selection again, but you need to run it with a different grouping. So what I can do is I can change this uh, Z7 to let's say Z5. So I'm just going to use a different grouping. So I close it, I save the changes in Notepad, and I'm going to bring, well, this is already here. So I'm going to bring the script playback and recording and uh, it's the same file, so I'm just going to click uh, execute again. And as you can see, it launches the transaction, it puts in a table name, and then now it has put in Z5 instead of Z7 um, and executed the report. So again, if you make sim if you need to make simple changes, like you know some of the values that you have entered, instead of recording the whole thing again, you can let's say make a copy of the VBS file, open in Notepad, and then make those few changes uh, in the code itself. And it works. It's very easy. It doesn't take a lot of uh, time to do all this. And as you can see, SAP does all the work for you. So you can just um, you know load the script, play, uh, sit back, and watch SAP doing all the work for you. And in this section, I want to cover some of the transactions that you can use to check whether scripting is enabled or if scripting is disabled in the system, how you can change that. Well, assuming that you have access to some of these transactions that I'm going to show you. But again, I wanted to contain all this information in one section. So if you have issues, you can just look at this section. 
So let's review all these restrictions and how scripting is enabled or disabled, how you can check and how you can make changes. And I think I've already covered, um, sorry, covered the checking part of it in the previous segments, but let's just recap again. So on the toolbar, you can go here um, over to this section of the toolbar, uh, sorry, the status bar. And then you can see here in my example, when I hover over this area, then it says um, SAP GUI scripting, scripting is not running which means that scripting is enabled, but it's just not running at the moment. So that's a good indication that scripting is enabled in, this, in my system. And if I go onto the um, local, customized local layout, and then scripting, script recording and playback, again, here I can see the, uh, the status of these two buttons. So I can see whether recording is enabled or playback is enabled. So again, that depends on the um, settings on your SAP instance that most probably basis have set uh, for you or yeah, set when the SAP system was installed. And uh, there are a few GUI settings as well. So again, you come to this button and then it in options and accessibility and scripting and scripting, and you can enable or disable the scripting. So that's on this specific GUI, um, um, uh, GUI logon instance, so that doesn't change anything on you know what is set up on the server. It just you can disable scripting for any reason uh, if you don't want your you know to your colleague to mess around with your um, um, through your GUI in your SAP. And as I mentioned previously, you have two checkboxes here, which are checked by default and you can, well, I usually uncheck them so I don't get additional notifications or pop-ups, uh, well, confirmation pop-ups when I start scripting on uh, within SAP. So normally I usually leave it like this. So these were all the things that you could check and um, well, basically just check, but there is a transaction where all these, uh, you know, system variables and the behaviors are defined. And of course, you might not have access to this transaction. In that case, you probably want to talk to Basis, uh, who would be able to change that. But the transaction is called RZ11. So you can uh, see whether you have access to it. And then the, um, the settings that we are going to look at are uh, well, I'm going to focus on two of them. One is called SAP GUI slash user underscore scripting, and the other one is SAP GUI uh, slash user underscore scripting underscore disable underscore recording. So the first one is the global um, flag, whether scripting is enabled or not, uh, like script executing script. And then the second one is whether uh, recording is specifically disabled. And what I found in client systems is, a recording is usually disabled in you know higher systems like in production or pre-production but then um, scripting is i think in most cases enabled but again um, it may vary from one client to another and then the recording is usually enabled in let's say in sandbox or test system so you can create the recordings in the development system and then just use uh, let's say the production to execute the script and this is what i do all the time so you don't have to do the recording in uh, um, in in production and in most cases I would just rather use you know not the production system to create and recordings but again if you only have access to production well <clears throat> you have the option to either talk to basis to enable recording or you have to access you know um, you have to request access to let's say a development system where you can do the recording so if I select, let's say, the um, disable recording, I can click on display. And then here in the current value, I can see that this is false. So recording is not disabled. And if you want to change this or any of the other parameters, then you click on change value. You get this message that it's a system wide parameter, but then you can, uh, let's say, type here true or false. If you have multiple instances, you can, uh, take this one to make these changes on all the servers or just the current server and then you save and then the settings will will get saved so this is how you can enable let's say um, so if this would be true you can put it false uh, you can put false here and then you can enable the recording <clears throat> and if you make the changes if you have access to make the changes you need to log out of GUI scripting and you need to, uh, sorry, you need to log out of the SAP GUI and then you need to log back again because that's the only way for these changes to make effect. 
In the beginning of the video, I said that I used um, SAP GUI scripting for all sorts of things and I never had any issues scripting any processes. I wasn't entirely true because uh, there are a few things where you might run into issues and these are namely the, you know, the Windows dialogues or the sort of like the operating system dialogues that uh, um, I mean, I use Windows, so the Windows dialogues, but if you use a different operating system, that probably or that operating system has some dialogues. So these are namely things like the open dialogues, the save dialogues, or print or print preview dialogues. So if you have a transaction where, let's say, you extract data, you download data from the SAP, um, maybe that you have a screen where you can specify you know the file name that it, the SAP needs to create in some cases maybe you just uh, get the usual windows or whatever you know operating system save dialog where you you know f find the directory the folder and you put your file name and then you click on save the problem is if you are trying to script record a scripting for any of these um, processes then you know, SAP GUI scripting is not going to record anything which is on that pop-up screen because that's not SAP GUI, that's a Windows dialog screen. So for those, you will have to find ways to go around it and um, try to use the transaction in a way that this uh, pop-up does not appear or you well, potentially use another uh, tr transaction which doesn't use that, use that pop-up because uh, you won't be able to control that uh, through GUI scripting. And unfortunately, I don't really have a solution for this. I think probably there are some programming tricks in Visual Basic, how you can get like handles of uh, Windows um, um, dialogues and then maybe send like an enter key to the save dialogue so it you know it just clicks on the save button but i've never been able to you know do any of these so i don't have a working solution for that and let me also show you how these windows dialogue look like so i'm back in sc16 and let's say i want to export this data that uh, i have selected uh, through the selection screen so so i always forget where this is but i think yeah in this uh, avr grid there is a button here to export something to local file you select the file type and then in this instance i think we are lucky because we have this screen where i can enter the directory and i can enter the file name that i want to uh, want to create but i can also press f4 here and that brings up the you know the save as dialogue so this is the dialogue that you won't be able to script so if you um if you create a if you record uh, press record the recording is going to record the events that you have pressed on this button which brings up the screen but whatever you type here and then the fact that you press save is not going to get recorded so if you try to play back anything like that it will bring up this save as dialog and it's just going to stay there because you know that's a windows component and gui scripting has no idea what to do with this but in this uh, in this specific instance i think we are lucky because i can specify the file name here i can specify the directory or the folder here and i can just click on generate so so in this case i don't have to use the windows um, the standard windows dialog to save the or specify the file name but again uh, this might not be the case in all the transactions so maybe there will be cases where let's say you generate a pdf output and sap is going to bring up a pdf preview window and in that preview window you have to click on save but that preview window is not a good uh, it's not an sap window it's maybe it's um, like an acrobat reader window and so that's not sap so those are not going to be scripted or if it brings up the file print dialog where you have to select uh, you know save as a pdf that again it's a windows print dialog so sap is not going to be able to script that and as i said i don't really have a solution for this so you just have to find a different way to use the transaction or you use a different transaction altogether where you can I don't know, somehow determine or specify what the file name is without going through any of these uh, Windows dialogues. So with this, we reach the end of this video. So in this video, I was trying to give you the basic knowledge about the SAP GUI scripting, how to create recordings, how to play back recordings. And hopefully I was able to explain the GUI scripting, what are the advantages, how you can use it in your consulting or you know, support role. And I've also given you a glimpse of all the other videos that you can already watch in this topic. 
So I think that would be all for this introduction video. Thanks for watching and hopefully see you in the next episode.